Why do those guys like Mad Lib, why do they just rate this record so much? Maybe just because it is such an amazing record, and also it's, it's an undiscovered one. I think diggers and good hip hop producers always like the stuff that's rare. My name's Ethan Alipat. We're here in Los Angeles at Now Again Records in Rap Cats, getting ready to celebrate the reissue of Arthur Verakai's self-titled Brazilian masterpiece. Arthur Verakai was, in his time, a relatively well-known uh, composer and arranger. Really was one of those like behind-the-scene types, kind of like uh, David Axelrod or um, Lalo Schifrin. He only ever did one solo album, which is his masterpiece. He did it when he was about 26 years old. Everything is perfect. There's the jazz elements, there's the Brazilian elements, there's even some funk elements, there's even some quite, because he's quite melancholic after, and there's some of those elements, which I think gives it a lift that you don't hear in other music. <laughs> record reveals itself in its nuances and there's so many nuances and there's so many things you hear listen after listen after listen that it's just one of those records that once you enter its world it, it, you never leave it. You know, Mad Lib and Dilla used to really go back and forth with the Verakai record and I always wondered why neither of them uh, didn't sample it. It was, it was odd because there were so many obvious parts that they could sample. The closest that I think Madlib got to sampling it was um, an outgoing voicemail where he just uh, looped the, the part that said uh, Mel's Peche, Mel's Peche. And I always thought that he did that because on the voicemail it sounded like who's there. We want to give people the original album as it was originally made with, with all the errors and then sonically give the, get the best tapes we can, package it so there's no barcode on the actual album, so it just looks exactly the same as if you'd wanted it into a shop in 1973 and bought it. And that's, that's our mission, and to, you know, to sleeve it up nice, give a good price, you know, and, and um, make it accessible for everyone. I think that records need like a definitive treatment, like, you know, a half-speed mastering job or like, you know, the proper package. And I look at what's been done before I come to the table and I say, can I do better than that? And if I can do better than that, then I say, let me put this out and hope that I can do the definitive version. Because if you do the definitive version on a great record, you can keep it in print for years. That's what I think is most important because how many people can actually go out there and find an original copy of this? It's now very expensive. Here for the uh, Mr. Bongo Arthur Verisai launch launch party. Here it is. It's awesome that it's being repressed. If anyone's going to do it properly, Mr. Bongo is going to do it right. Imagine if somebody tried to explain why you should buy El Mad. You know what I mean? This is a record that is in the top, the utmost, highest bar of music that's been created. Don't fucking sleep, though. <laughs>